from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 7th, 2024. The devastating one-year anniversary of the October 7th Hamas massacre is being marked today across Israel, here in the United States and beyond, marking the horrific assault on southern Israel carried out by terror group Hamas on October the 7th of 2023 when thousands of Palestinian terrorists from Gaza committed unspeakable atrocities of torture and rape and the horrific murders of some 1,200 people, men, women, children, babies. 251 people, men, women, children, and babies abducted. 101 hostages remaining held in Gaza. And as Israelis began to commemorate the massacre today, rocket attacks from several terrorist groups, including Hamas, continued at the State of Israel. Hamas fired rockets at southern Israel and at Tel Aviv and its surrounding areas in central Israel early this morning, seemingly timed to the minute of the beginning of the massacre the terror group committed one year ago. And then later today, once again fired at the area. Two women were lightly wounded by shrapnel. A ballistic missile was launched at Israel today from Yemen. Sirens sending millions of Israelis to seek shelter. It was successfully intercepted by the IDF's aerial defense array. Over 120 rockets were fired by terror group Hezbollah from Lebanon at northern Israel last night, including at the cities of Tiberias and Haifa, with some five injuries reported ranging from moderate to serious and serious damage. Hezbollah launched more rockets at northern Israel throughout the day today. And since the eve of the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah Wednesday, the IDF announced a number of casualties in its ground operation in Lebanon and in northern Israel. Two IDF soldiers were killed last night when a rocket fired by Hezbollah made impact near an IDF position on the Israeli side of the Lebanese border, killing 43-year-old IDF warrant officer in reserve Aviv Magen. 25-year-old Master Sergeant in Reserve Itai Azulai was critically wounded in that attack and died this morning from his injuries. And two more IDF soldiers were killed this past Thursday in a drone attack carried out by the Iranian-backed Islamic resistance in Iraq on an IDF base in the Golan Heights, which killed 19-year-old Sergeant Daniel Aviv Chaim Sofer and 19-year-old Corporal Tal Dror. Eight IDF soldiers were killed this past Wednesday fighting Hezbollah in Lebanon. They are 22-year-old Captain Eitan Yitzhak Oster, 23-year-old Captain Harel Ettinger, 23-year-old Captain Itai Ariel Giat, 22-year-old Sergeant First Class Noam Barzilai, 21-year-old Sergeant First Class Or Mansour, 21-year-old Sergeant First Class Nazar Itkin, 21-year-old Staff Sergeant Alam Ken Terefe, and 21-year-old Staff Sergeant Ido Breuer. 21-year-old Captain Ben Sion Falah was killed in a separate incident fighting Hezbollah in Lebanon. The IDF also announced today that 28-year-old Sergeant First Class and Reserve Nir Haddad who was seriously wounded fighting Hamas in Gaza back in June, died of his injuries yesterday. And the IDF announced today that Idan Shtivi, who was considered a living hostage in Gaza, was in fact murdered on October the 7th at the Nova Music Festival, his body kidnapped into Gaza, where it is still being held. And a border police officer was murdered yesterday, and at least 10 others were injured in a terror attack at the Be'er Sheva bus station in southern Israel, where a terrorist said to be an Israeli Bedouin opened fire, killing 19-year-old Sergeant Shira Suslik. The terrorist was said to have been killed by IDF soldiers at the scene. Well, we turn back now to the devastating one-year anniversary of October the 7th, 
and these ceremonies, memorials, and rallies held across Israel today and last night, where the images of the remaining hostages were projected onto the walls of Jerusalem's old city. A commemoration ceremony was held today at the site of the Nova Music Festival massacre, led by the Jewish National Fund USA and the bereaved families of October the 7th held a memorial ceremony this evening, which was televised and screened for thousands who gathered in Tel Aviv's Hostage Square, among many other locations across the country, which included remarks from family members who lost loved ones on that dark day and moving musical performances, including from Gali Atari and Corina Lal of the song Ein Li Eretz Acheret, I Have No Other Country. Ein li eretz acheret. I have no other country, even if my land is burning. Just a word in Hebrew penetrates to my veins, to my soul. With a body in pain, with a hungry heart, here is my home. Ein li eretz acheret, gam im admati boeret, Mila beivrit choderet Eloka elishmati Beguf koev Belev raev Kanu beiti World leaders released statements marking the day today including U.S. President Joe Biden who mourned the victims of October the 7th and strongly condemned the brutal Hamas massacre. The president wrote, Vice President Harris and I remain fully committed to the safety of the Jewish people, the security of Israel and its right to exist. We support Israel's right to defend itself against attacks from Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis and Iran, and noted the U.S.'s assistance last week in the successful defense of Israel, helping to defeat an Iranian ballistic missile attack. The president also said the U.S. will never give up until we bring all of the remaining hostages home safely. Biden also strongly condemned, he said, the vicious surge in anti-Semitism in America and around the world, which he called unacceptable. The president later lit a Yortzeit candle for the victims of October the 7th, together with First Lady Jill Biden and Rabbi Aaron Alexander of Congregation Addis Israel in Washington, who led the El Malay Rahamim prayer. Vice President Kamala Harris wrote today, I am devastated by the loss and pain of the Israeli people as a result of the heinous October 7th attack. We all must ensure nothing like the horrors of October the 7th ever happen again. She said, I will do everything in my power to ensure that the threat Hamas poses is eliminated, that it is never again able to govern Gaza, that it fails in its mission to annihilate Israel, and that the people of Gaza are free from the grip of Hamas. I will never stop fighting for the release of all the hostages, including the seven American citizens living and deceased. Still held, she noted, Omer, Idan, Sagi, Keith, Judy, Gad, and Itai. I will never stop fighting for justice for those who murdered Hirsch Goldberg Poland and other Americans, and I will always ensure Israel has what it needs to defend itself against Iran and Iran-backed terrorists like Hamas. Harris saying, my commitment to the security of Israel is unwavering. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, October the 7th at 7, a special memorial event honoring the victims of the October 7th massacre with a video presentation, candle lighting, stirring melodies, and powerful remarks from leaders who have made an impact during these difficult times. That's from the Chabad of Palm Beach Gardens. At 8 o'clock, Abigail Pogerben is joined by Rabbi David Seth Kirshner to talk about his book that chronicles the first 50 days of the Israel-Hamas war. At 8.30, David Harris reflects on Israel and the global landscape at this one-year anniversary mark of the tragic events of October the 7th. At 9, IDF lone soldier Josh Warhit is on L'Chaim. At 10, it's a replay of Abigail Pogerbin with Rabbi David Seth Kirshner. At 10.30, an encore of the news. And coming up next, Good Week Israel. And that's the JBS News update for Monday, October the 7th, 2024. 
I'm Tisha Bader. Am Yisrael Chaim.